this project you will need worsted weight yarn. I have yellow for the center, white for the petals, and green for my outside color. The coordinating hook and the suggested hook in the pattern is a size H, which is a five millimeter hook. I have another video where I show you how I wrap um, sports tape around the end of the hook and I just, I do all my hooks this way now. And you will also need a pair of scissors and a yarn needle at the end. To start, I'll make a slip knot. I'll go around like this in a circle. Then I bring that top strand around the back. It looks like a pretzel. I pull that forward. I have a knot side there and this I call my slip side. And I'm going to tighten the knot side and pull on the slip side. I'm going to put that loop on my hook like this. Now in the pattern it says chain four, One, two, three, four. Then I'm going to slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring, which is this, and then into here. And you'll notice that you have a little space between the chains. Now I'm going to chain two. Then I'm going to work 12 double crochets into the ring. While I'm working into the ring, I'm also going to work over the end of my starting chain here. So my center is here. You may want to put your finger in that little, uh, in the center to hold your space there. So I'm also working over the end of my starting chain. It's actually 14 double crochets into the ring. The way I'm doing this pattern, I'm not going to count the chain two as a double crochet stitch. And I'm going to, when I come around, I'm just going to join into the first double and just act like that is not even there. And you'll see what a difference that makes in the, in the joining. Right here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's nine. 10, 11, now you want to push, you can hold the beginning right here and then just pull these around the circle. And I'm still working over the end of my starting chain. So I'm not going to count that beginning chain two. I have so here I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, just one more. Now I have fourteen double crochets. I'm not going to go into that beginning chain two. I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet, like that. So there. I have a full double crochet at the beginning there. So now I'm going, going to snip my end like this and pull this out and sew that end in later. Because I worked over the end of my starting chain, I can pull that end tight like this and it closes that up. And then when I sew the end in, it'll be real secure. Now to join the white for the petals, I'm going to start with another slip stitch. And in the directions, it says join the white with a slip stitch in any of the double crochets. So I'm just going to choose this one right here 
and I'm going to slip stitch here and then I'm going to tighten up this chain and then I chain three and it says keeping last loop of each stitch on hook work three treble crochets in the same stitch as joining. So a treble crochet is yarn over twice. I'm gonna go back into the stitch, but I'm gonna keep the last loop of each stitch on my hook. We go in here, draw through two, draw through two, and then instead of drawing through two, I'm just gonna draw through one. And I have to do that three times. So that was my starting chain right there. And these are the three trebles where I left the last loop of each stitch on the hook. So now I'm going to yarn over and draw through all four loops on my hook. And then I'm going to chain four. And so this is going to be referred to as a four treble cluster stitch. So then I'm going to one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to do this four treble cluster stitch in the next double crochet. So I'm going to go in here, work a treble, but leave the last loop on my hook. There's four, and then yarn over, draw through all the loops on my hook like that. You'll notice, I'm gonna put these back on. Well, that didn't work out so good. Getting this mixed up. Okay, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna, I will show you on the next cluster stitch. Yarn over twice, go in here, keep the last loop of each stitch on your hook. Notice that in our beginning cluster stitch there were only four loops when you drew uh, when you draw through and on this one on all the other cluster stitches you will be drawing through five to finish off your cluster stitch You may have to move these around a little bit, like push them back so that you can get access to the next double crochet stitch. They're pretty crammed in there, but they look really cute, the petals do, when you get them done. This is half the petals completed. When these loops get pulled out for the next round, the petals will look, lay flat. So this is what this is looking like. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. I only need 
one more. This was my joining. I should have this sewn in, but the next double crochet I need to work in is right there. Now I have the 14 petals. I'm ready to join. When I join, I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first chain up here. Normally when I do a pattern for a cluster stitch, I designate the first chain after you pull through all those loops as the eye of the cluster stitch. I'm going to change the pattern so that it reads that this is the eye of the cluster stitch so that when you come around you know exactly where to join. It will be in that first chain, in that chain four between the clusters. So now I'll just bring it through there, then I'll bring it through one more time, pull the back, and then I'll cut back here, and there I'm done with round two. So that's what the daisy looks like. This would be an amazing coaster. That's so cute. Or you could sew it on something for an embellishment. The pattern says with right side facing, and I wish I would have pointed that out to you when I was doing round one, but round one, all the stitches were on this side and I was working from this side, so that became the right side. And then I had the right side facing of round one, and I did all of these stitches towards me, so that was right side facing. And if you get mixed up, the back will look quite different. When you look at the back of this, the double crochets in round one look different from the um, double crochets on the front side. The front side looks different from the back side. Also, the cluster stitches look like that on the wrong side, but they look, to me, much prettier on the right side. So in the directions it says, with right side facing, join this uh, main color with a slip stitch to any chain four space chain three, but I am going to join with a double crochet since I'm going to be doing four double crochets in every four, a chain four space around. So I'm going to, there's another video on this, but I can show it to you. I start with a slip knot on my hook. I yarn over like this, and I'm gonna hold, this finger here is gonna hold I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. It's gonna hold the starting chain and the yarn over like this. Then I have my yarn held like this over here. Then I'm going to insert the hook here into the chain four space. I'm going to yarn over, pull that loop up, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, and draw through two. So before I release this, this finger has been on that starting chain the whole time. There's so many little minute movements in crochet and I try to make you aware of them because I just by doing these videos, I become aware of the very minute movements. That and also I've taken uh, meditation classes. So I am able to you know, see the micro movements, which are very important. So even right here, I've got this finger doing a lot of work. It's like driving a car, you just get used to doing it and you forget about 
All the little things that go into driving. It's the same with crocheting. So on this round, you just go around and put four double crochets into each space around. This uh, hook grip is amazing. I just started using it after I did a video on hook grips. It's so much more comfortable. I'll put a link to that video in the description. I'll also put a link to the pattern. This design was originally done about at least 10 years ago. And it was done in a three-part series. At the time, we thought that was a great idea to do that on our channel. Now I'm trying to redo some of those old videos and put them all into one video. The one thing I really like about joining with a double crochet instead of that slip stitch and then the chain three counting as the double crochet is that when you come back around you've got a solid stitch to go into. Now I'm all the way around. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh. I just love this. Look how beautiful that is. That would be a really cute coaster too. Or something. It's so cute. You could continue going on a circle all the way out as long as you increase 12 double crochets all the way out. You can make like a big placemat or or something. Okay, so now I have four in all, I think it's 14 uh, chain four spaces around, so then I have 56 double crochets. I hope that count is right. Yeah, I think it is. Now I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet, so I just go under here and through there. So now that was a nice joining. I'm going to have you do a chain two. This is never going to be counted. I'm going to go ahead and do two double crochets here. And then double crochet in the next three double crochets. So no increasing on the next three, just double crochet like that. So this was an increase because I put two doubles there and then double, double, double. And then an increase, two in that one, and then three. So it's the same all the way around. I usually do a little, it seems like a little chant sometimes. I go two, one, 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 two, one, 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 as I'm going around. then I still get mixed up sometimes. These would make great gifts. You could do them in all different colors. Most of what crocheters make, they give away as gifts. see how it's doing right now. It's almost halfway. That worked out perfect. And the repeats worked out good. When I come back around, I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet. I'm going to ignore this beginning chain two. So I'm just going to go in here like this and bring that through. I'm going to do what my pattern says. One, two, three, four. Then it says double crochet 
in the same stitch as joining like that. Oh, it's gonna make a little loop like this. Then it says skip next double crochet and slip stitch, chain four, double crochet in the next stitch. So like this, like that. And then I'm going to skip the next double crochet, slip stitch in this double crochet, like that. And it, this is going to make a cute little scallop around the outside. So I skip this stitch, I slip stitch in here, I'm going to chain four, double crochet in the same stitch like that. I think I chained five, let me check. One, two, three, no I didn't. I had it right. Okay, here. Then I'm going to skip a double crochet, slip stitch in the next one, chain four, double crochet in the next one, skip one, slip stitch, chain four, double crochet in the next one, skip one. So I'll repeat this all the way around. I always love when I get around to the end of the round and I've got the exact, I've got the numbers right. I've got the repeats right because I still have one double crochet here that I can skip and then I will slip stitch into the first slip stitch here to join the round. But this is what that looks like. It's so cute. So now I'm going to join with a slip stitch in the first double crochet that I worked right there and then I'm going to I'm not going to pull that through to lock it I'm going to because I feel like that that lump would show up right there so I'm going to just cut it back here and then pull it here and then sew it into the back without creating another slip stitch or I might just put it down in there. But that's how you make the daisy dishcloth. Oh, I just love it. To sew in your ends, you would just go like this. I fold the end, uh, I fold the yarn over the eye of my needle or you could do it over the tip of your needle. And then you open your fingertips up and push the folded end through the needle. So the yarn right here, this is the end of the starting chain. So I want to pull that up a little bit like this. I insert my needle a little bit behind here, behind where it came out. It came out here, so I wanna be a little bit behind it. And then I'm going to go a little bit out like that. I came out here, so I'm going to come back a little bit behind that and go back out about a half inch like that. I always lay my work flat like this and I cut like that. I will continue to sew in all my ends off camera, but this is what the daisy dishcloth looks like. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you in the next video.